thanks for joining me again. I'm going to use my normal palette. It's just Cutman watercolor squeezed out and allow it to dry overnight. We've got ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, lizarin crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber, light red. This is the large run rancinate and this is just clean water I'm using. Just to lubricate the paper all over, it'll also stop it from uh, crinkling. And basically what I'm doing, I'm, I'm stretching the paper while I paint. You can do it before if you like. I just prefer to do it this way. So I'm just going straight into raw sienna and just bashing it in. No particular order to it. Nice and random. All the way down to the bottom. Clean the brush. Uh, then what? Uh, raw sienna. Bit of ultramarine. Bit of blue. Let's see what that looks like. You can test it out on the side of your paper if you like, or you can just bash it straight in. Just depends how how reckless you're feeling. Bit of blue. Bit more water really. It's not. Just so you can get it to. Just come down the page a little bit more. A bit more raw sienna, burnt umber, lizard and crimson. I think that's enough. Enough around there. So I'm just going to pop a few little clouds in. Um, clouds are sort of coming down there like that. And they come down big and then they get smaller as they go up over the horizon. Can also use a bit of tissue, you know, clouds like that. There's a hill there, so I'll just take a few clouds out there it's just to show the profile of the hill. I don't know that bit there, so I'll pull that up. There's a hill over there, so let's put a few clouds there. Darken these sides a little bit. Remember, the darker you make the sides, the lighter the reflections appear. So you can see how it's starting to stretch slightly, how it's coming away from the board. So, what I'm going to do, just unfix it, pull it tight, and re clip it with these bulldog clips. Makes life a lot easier just using these clips. I mean some people just stretch the paper first and then just use masking tape but um, I used to do it like that but it's a lot of messing about. Right, so same colours as the sky, just dipping the tip into the walls just to loosen the paint a little bit. And then, first you've got the, that's the most distant hill there. So. Same sky colours, add just a little bit of green to it, and we got one slightly closer. I'm going to add a lot more green to it, a bit of raw sienna, a bit of green, a bit of blue. And that's coming up there like that. In fact, I'm going to clean that a bit. I'm just going to go a bit more yellow, it's more of a, a lighter, brighter yellow. I think the sun's shining on this, this side. Down there, something like that. So we're on this side, the left hand side. That's a little bit high, that is. And then it comes down something like that. And I'm just going to make a little bit of mist there in the valleys. Didn't mean to go over there, though. just put that profile back in there, like so. And that's coming down. Right, so there's going to be like a river flowing around there. That's down there. Something like that. Yeah, a bit of brown. Now I'm going into the uh, the 
banks. Oops, didn't mean to do that. I'll cover that. Up. Well, I'll probably cover that up with some pebbles or something. So now over here is the far side of the river bank. So I'm going into a bit of burnt umber, a bit of ultramarine, and coming down there. That's good enough. Something like that. Just dipping the tips in just to loosen the paint so the brush has gone a bit dry. Generally got just enough water just to hold the hairs together. That's all you need. And then I'm just going to use a just a piece of card, plastic card. Scratch. It's just just about dry enough. This is. You see, if it's too wet, it'll just it'll just fill back in, and you'll have to wait for it to dry a bit more. And they're obviously getting smaller and smaller as they're going off into the distance. Oh, that one's too big. They're too big, just paint straight over them. It's not the end of the world. And then I'm sort of doing it so it's parallel with the bottom of the page. Don't sort of do it, have your brush stroke slanted like that. I always have the brush like that. They're big in there, and then some smaller ones over there. So I'm going to mess around with that anymore. Now here we've got I've cleaned the brush, excess water off on the lid, and then just take the rest of the excess water comes off on the tea towel and I'm going lemon yellow. Lemon yellow, some bright yellow there, and then we're going darker, darker green. So it's ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey. It's going right up there. So like that, I'm just flicking the brush up, using the corner of the brush, just flicking it up like that. Clean the brush. I want to go back to lighter now, so I need to clean the brush. Back into that lemon yellow. See, that's coming down. Just a touch of blue on there. Just to vary it a bit. a little bit of fly on this paper. I'm just going to pull it tight again, refix it with these clips. And then again got the bank. So I've gone into a bit of burnt burnt umber, a bit of ultramarine, sort of dark colour now. These will be the rocks on this far side. Again, we can just use the, uh, the now this is a bit, little bit drier because it's, it's going on a bit better. You see, it's not filling in at all, and I can just scrape away. It's all my heart's content. Yeah. Just finish that bank up. Right then, now there's water coming there. Now often I'll just leave the water. In fact, I think I'll just leave the water as it is. Um, I mean, if you like, you can sort of swish it round. Because I've got a nice reflection there. You can see the light area of the sky reflecting the water. So I'm just going to increase these uh, pebbles. So there's, see how you get nice, nice drama now. See the darker bits going over the lighter bits. Looking just to that counter, counter chain, that contrast. Dip the tips in the water just to loosen the paint a bit. Just went a bit dry then. 
can see. Nice no, chisel edge, chisel edge, and there's just enough moisture in there just to bring the paint off nice and sharp. You can see. You see how I've always got the brush parallel to the bottom of the paper. I don't do it like that, slanted one way or the other. Where the, the rocks and stuff are in the going to the river, and with that, I can find a piece of card. Again, that's uh, slightly wet, I can see where it's just filling in a little bit. Big rock there, and another big one down there. Like that. Just wetting that slightly so that I can then just use a fingernail. We've got some trees there, so I'm just using a fingernail and just scratching out a few, a few tree trunks. And see, like, see like we imagine where the light's just catching the tree trunk because it's coming through there, just catching the trunk. I'll just try and keep it sort of up. It's so easy to overdo it. I should stop there really, but you just can't resist it. Um, I think all I'm going to do now is just put a, two or three little birds in the sky. So I'm switching to the rigger. You see how versatile that eight brush is? I did all that with the height brush and a bit of card. So I'm just going to use the rigger. Bring it to a fine point, just give it a twist, bring it to a fine point. Make sure your hands clean. I don't want to smudge, smudge the paint. You can use the air dryer and dry it if you like, but I'm just going to go straight out of here. And just pop these birds in. Let's have a closer look at it and see what it looks like close up. Well I've put a mount on it to see what it looks like. Uh, it don't look too bad. Starting up with the sky, you can see, always try and get sort of dark and light areas in the sky, try and create some sort of drama. You can see when I took off the clouds here with the tissue. Same on the other side. we got our little birds up here flying away. Most distant land there, you can see, almost well. I've, it's almost the same colour. I tried to get it to that same sort of purpley colour. Pushed right back, and then introducing lemon yellow, try and liven um, more uh, colourful foreground there. Green grass of the hills, swooping down to this sort of valley where the river. I've I've sort of blocked it in there. The, the stream river sort of bends round there, but I've. Uh, didn't quite get that right. Put these trees in darker just so they contrast against the green of the hills. Almost a bit too much Payne's grey really, they don't even look green. You can see a bit of scraping with the fingernail, see where it sort of looks as if but you've got the lights coming down here, sort of catching the tree trunks and off right into the distance. Again you can see scrape. We're using the card, these rocks here on the river bank on the far side all the way. Getting smaller and smaller as they go off into the distance. A few more on this side. And then it's easy to get into a route where you just make everyone the same shape. So try and create different sorts of shapes, sort of 
sometimes you'll be, sort of do sort of circular type motions then sometimes it'll be straight just to try and mix it up a bit so all the rocks look different but it's quite an effective technique the paint will have to be about half dry really otherwise it'll just fill in then obviously if you leave it too dry you, you won't be able to scrape it although you can re-wet it again a few more rocks over on this side you can see I've tried to get the light of the sky reflecting in the water it just helps create that illusion that, that water effect all helps um, well thanks for watching if you've enjoyed it please subscribe you can also help me by liking sharing commenting in the video description below uh, keep practicing any questions please ask and I'll see you again soon